back to the NWR Communications Day 3 of the Resources Conference. The next company to present will be Nelson Resources. Uh, Nelson is a gold exploration company based in uh, WA. Its projects are in WA, where I think its key aim is to find the next Tropicana. Um, uh, today presenting will be Adam Schofield. Adam is the Executive Director of Nelson Resources. And he's been a company, a mining company executive uh, for over 20 years within a range of, uh, of sectors in Australia, Africa, uh, encompassing uh, field work studies, feasibility studies, uh, and into operations. So uh, welcome, Adam, and we look forward to the uh, the update on, on Nelson Resources. Thank you, Mark, and thank, thank you, NWR, for uh, having us here again. This is a fantastic platform, obviously, for us to uh, tell our story. Um, so we are Nelson Resources. Uh, we're a listed company. Uh, we've been listed for three years now. And um, in the three years that we've been listed, we've uh, pulled together a, a suite of projects that we think are exceptional. Um, these projects are predominantly on the Albany Fraser range. And um, we're, as I said, very excited about it. So I'll, I'll get into the presentation. Um, the, the lead slide says we're hunting for the next Tropicana and we have a lot of reason to think um, that we have a legitimate reason for stating that. Um, I'll get into the presentation. Uh, that's a standard disclaimer. I won't uh, linger on that. Um, we have a very tight capital structure. We have just over uh, 100 million shares in issue. Uh, we're currently trading at 0.67 cents. Uh, we have been trading between seven and eight for the last three to four months. Um, and we, we think our share price has been held uh, very stably, predominantly because of the assets that we have and, and the game plan that we have going forwards. Um, very tight structure. We don't have too many significant shareholders in the structure, but we believe that'll change um, as and when we start delivering positive results. Um, so we have four gold projects uh, in West Australia. Um, as I say, the bulk of the projects are uh, in the Albany Fraser, and that is made up of the Woodline project um, at 850 square kilometres and a project called Tempest, which is next to an IGO rumble project. Uh, we have a couple of other projects um, uh, around Fortnum and uh, on Edgardina Station. Um, a lot of money spent um, on the projects that we have by other people and ourselves. Um, the main project to say Woodline has had $14 million spent by uh, previous explorers, SEPA Newmont being um, the predominant explorers in that area. Um, within that major project, um, we have 45 kilometers of the Kundalini share um, and uh, a number of other fault lines confluencing within the tenement. It's an unusual tenement uh, in that we have this much activity. Um, and because of this, it's, uh, there is a lot of exploration to be done and a lot of future uh, exploration to look forward to. Um, we currently have uh, teams in field doing geophysics um, and are soon to have uh, drilling commencing. Um, I'll flick onto the next slide. This is our project locations within Western Australia and um, uh, Woodline's been highlighted in red. We're about 60 kilometers east of Norseman and uh, we're between the Trans-Australia rail line and uh, the air highway. Um, our neighbors um, are fairly uh, influential. We have FMG with uh, 3000 square kilometers of ground just northeast of us and um, IGO legend um, amongst many other explorers uh, surround us on all sides. Um, we're 350 kilometers southeast of Tropicana, a uh, southwest story of Tropicana, um, and I'll get into why that's important uh, in the next few slides. This image here um, is a magnetic image. It's a regional mag image. Um, it shows our tenure at the bottom uh, left-hand side of the image in yellow, um, and sort of to the top uh, right-hand side, you can see um, um, uh, Angler Golda Shanti's tenure in green. Um, what this doesn't show is all of the other tenure that surrounds um, our projects, and there, there really is no free tenure in this region. Um, this mag image is um, it's quite an interesting image. The, the area in blue, which looks a bit like a river, um, is the boundary between the Albany Fraser origin and uh, the Yilgen Craton. Um, it's geologically exactly, or well, the, the setting that uh, Woodline Project is in is an identically an identical setting to um, um, Tropicana. And we think that's very important uh, with what we're trying to achieve uh, from an exploration perspective. Um, Tropicana, obviously 7.7 uh, 7 million ounces. Um, there's a number of other projects uh, with significant uh, grades and intercepts in the area. 
Um, there hasn't been a major discovery um, out here for gold since uh, Tropicana was discovered um, nearly 20 years ago now. Um, so we think um, we think we have the opportunity to do another Tropicana, and we think, um, as I say, everything gives us the same setting as that. So I'll get more into that. Um, that's a repeat of uh, of the areas that we have. Um, Within our tenure, we have a 20 kilometer gold geochemical anomaly that was identified by CEPA and Newmont. Uh, it is on the Kundalini Fault, as, as mentioned before, this is where uh, Tropicana uh, is hosted. Um, this 20 kilometer anomaly um, uh, grades 100 parts per billion at surface um, and is correlated in the uh, top of fresh rock, which is important. Uh, it says that the gold is uh, within, within bedrock and um, it's a significant strike. Uh, Tropicana, as a comparison, initially was a 5 ppb anomaly um, and on a much smaller scale. So uh, this gets us very excited. Um, we also have a 30 kilometer greenstone belt to the west of uh, the Woodline project uh, that is unexplored. Um, and that is on the junction of the Norseman uh, Waluna greenstones. Um, and this is, there's a number of uh, exploration plays on that greenstone belt just to the north of us uh, that are having good results. Um, as mentioned earlier, there's $14 million worth of expenditure being made um, on the Woodline project. Um, currently, we have four projects within the tenure. Um, they, they are Grindle, Redmill, Harvey, and Socrates. Socrates was the project that we listed with in uh, 2017. Um, it was 12 square kilometers, uh, so not, not a particularly large uh, tenement, uh, but we have put uh, significant work into that um, and, and delivered some really um, exceptional results. Um, we, we believe that will host um, a large gold resource uh, and we're obviously working our way towards uh, developing that. Um, the notable intercepts at Socrates, um, one meter at 142 grams. Um, my favorite is 192 meters at half a gram. That's effectively from surface, um, and that's about 350 meters north of uh, the bulk of our drilling. So it says there's metal in the system, um, and we're potentially looking at a large uh, structure. Um, eight meters at 300 at 3.53 grams. Um, that's from surface, um, and 25 meters at two grams. So the results are not to be um, uh, sneezed at. They're they're important, um, and, and certainly indicate that we have the opportunity to pull a, um, a resource together there that can be mined in the future. Uh, historical drilling by CEPA and Newmont uh, and ourselves, um, yeah, 14 and a half thousand auger samples across all of the tenure, um, 4,000 meters of uh, Rabin Air Corps and uh, 84 RC holes through, um, through the project. So this is predominantly through um, the 20 kilometer uh, gold anomaly that uh, I mentioned earlier. Um, there's only five diamond holes being put in uh, into the structure that was done by um, uh, MRG uh, about six years ago. Um, and a lot of work spent, uh, a lot of lead up exploration, but none of it sterilizing. So um, it, it's it's been primed for us to come in with the next phase of work, which is what we intend to do. Um, this is really just a repeat of um, uh, the Albany Fraser origin um, and, and the 20 kilometer anomaly uh, that I mentioned before. Um, I won't longer on that slide because it is a repeat of everything I've already said. Um, this image is uh, important. Um, if you have your um, if you have your uh, visual screen on the right hand side, if you maybe move that over just a little bit to the left, you'll be able to see uh, Tropicana shown um, to scale in the image on the right. What this image uh, shows is the 20 kilometer gold anomaly uh, on the Kundalini Fault. Um, and it also shows the green stones to the left of the image. Um, Socrates is highlighted just to the north of the image. Um, the interesting thing obviously is the Tropicana comparison and the scale comparison. Um, it, it really, it gives you an idea of just how large um, this anomaly is that we have. Uh, within the Tropicana image, um, there's a blue pitch shell and uh, the areas in red are actually the bulk of the resource. So it, it shows you that the resource is effectively quite constrained, albeit um, uh, mined in a larger pit. So if you, if you were to inject that into uh, the anomaly that we're looking in at, you could, you could fit in multiple times. Um, notable intercepts out here by CEPA and Newmont, um, and I need to put that in context, they, they only put 77 RC holes across the entire anomaly uh, before the GFC uh, in 2012. 
um, and right up until SEPA's exit from the project, uh, they were adamant that um, there was a Tropicana to be found here. We, we agree with them. Um, the, the, the intercepts show that there's gold in bedrock. Um, you know, the best, best is nine meters at uh, 1.3 grams per ton. Um, and although that might sound exciting, the core of that is, is seven gram meters. And, and with the understanding that we're now having of the structures, uh, that really gives us an indication that um, we could be on a very large system and, and expect to be on a large system. Um, work that we've done recently, um, I'll flick into the next slide. Um, we completed an, an ultra high resolution uh, mag program around eight weeks ago. The idea of, of this, uh, so it was a ground-based magnetics program. Uh, the idea really was to delineate uh, any apparent structures in the magnetic um, imagery. Um, and we, we've done so. Uh, the image on the right uh, quite clearly shows a, um, a geological structure that um, is, is quite clear. And, um, and on the left-hand side, there's a second geological structure. So what we've focused on here is existing uh, holes that have been drilled um, by Super Newmont and then spread a uh, ultra high resolution magnetics program around that. Um, so the structures are clear um, and give us targets to drill. Um, what we've done recently uh, is acquire um, a number of uh, geophysical um, setups that uh, we think will help us uh, find and delineate these structures better. So whilst working on, on uh, geophysics, um, we're also pulling together our drill, next drill program. Um, I'll flick through the slides and then come back to um, talking about our next uh, round of work. Uh, which really highlights around these images that are showed now. Um, the Norseman Aluna Greenstone Belt, which is to the left of the Tenya, um, as mentioned previously, is, is predominantly unexplored. Um, there's been very little work done by SEPA or Newmont, and, um, and we, think that the, uh, we think that the opportunity to find gold out here is, is genuine. Some of the, uh, the geochemistry, sorry, uh, done by SEPA and Newmont does highlight uh, anomalism across the green stones. Um, and we also have uh, some nickel anomalism that hasn't been followed up uh, at the bottom left-hand side of the uh, greenstone belt um, as shown in that image. Um, there's a number of um, discoveries to the north of us. Uh, Bombora um, is potentially a 2 million ounce deposit. Um, that's about 60 Ks north of uh, ourselves on that greenstone belt. Um, that greenstone belt sits on the Keith Kilkenny uh, fault. Um, Socrates, uh, shown on the right hand side of, of that image, is on the uh, clay pan shear. Uh, and then we have the 20 kilometer anomaly um, on um, the Kundalini fault. So, geologically, very significant, as mentioned earlier, um, and lots of opportunity. So, um, just to mention um, total uh, ounces on the clay pan and uh, Keith Kilkenny faults. Um, there is somewhere around 60 million of ounces of, of historically mined or currently contained resource on those two uh, fault zones, and um, they include, include notable uh, deposits like Karasu Dam. Uh, Bellevue is, is uh, on the Waluna end of the uh, Keith Kilkenny fault. Um, Sons of Gualia, uh, Mount Keith uh, nickel operation uh, is on um, the Keith Kilkenny fault as well. So very, very um, uh, in, exciting and um, important uh, fault zones in Western Australia for gold bearing deposits. Uh, and of course, Tropicana on the uh, Kundalini fault. So um, I'll come back to the, uh, while we're, um, what the investment uh, opportunity is, um, but I'll go back to uh, the slide and, and what we're currently doing. So um, what we've done is we've um, established um, um, a real geophysics um, lead to what we're doing from an exploration and drilling perspective. Um, uh, ultra high resolution magnetics obviously is, is what we've done initially. Uh, there is some infill um, ultra high res mag to do uh, on the existing uh, areas that we've done. Uh, we're currently doing a, a ground-based EM survey uh, with a piece of equipment called Loopy. Um, that's currently deployed in field uh, and that's going to be followed up by a induced polarization program, which uh, is a system that we've bought in-house. Uh, it would make uh, any geophysics company uh, quite excited to, to own one. 
the reason we've done that is Tropicana um, was delineated with uh, gradient array uh, induced polarization, and, and we believe we will see the same thing out here. Um, effectively, we pay for the system in one month of use. Um, we, we have upwards of six months of work to do um, on our project. So we're trying to invest in, um, in capital equipment so as to best um, um, save money and be able to operate uh, as and when we would like to operate as opposed to being um, bound by timelines that geophysics companies have uh, or drilling companies. Uh, that leads me into um, the fact that we just bought ourselves a, uh, a diamond drill rig. Um, it's a very large uh, Desco 7000 um, capable of doing up to 1400 meters of diamond. Um, we anticipate being in field in the next two to three weeks with that drill rig uh, to commence our first diamond program with our own equipment. Um, as one can imagine, it's it, it's no small feat to buy a uh, um, a diamond drill um, or an exploration drill and gear it up to operate as a driller. We think this is very important um, uh, going into the new year. Um, there's a large number of uh, exploration companies uh, being listed. And uh, with the current uh, issues around coronavirus, there's a shortage of staff um, for drilling companies amongst other um, um, exploration based companies. Um, and the idea really is uh, to future proof ourselves. Um, that rig will be converted over to an RC rig. Um, it's about a three hour uh, changeover from RC to diamond. Um, and the idea is that we will do our first diamond program uh, before Christmas. Um, and the idea of that is to get some uh, petrophysics, um, um, oh, sorry, not petrophysics, uh, geophysics. Uh, so we actually understand what we're um, what we're doing from a, uh, a geophysical perspective, but also to give us some structural controls around the uh, the structures that are identified in these two mag images. Um, going forwards, um, we obviously don't need uh, anybody's permission to go drilling. Um, we, we've waited a couple of months now for a drilling contractor to uh, deliver a rig, and, and that hasn't eventuated. Uh, we've had to uh, come up with our own solution and. Um, uh, the old days when exploration companies actually own their uh, own gear is uh, is coming back, I would imagine. Um, I think if you don't own your own gear, um, you're beholden to uh, third party suppliers. Um, we, we think that's dangerous. Um, uh, we also were quite aware of um, the lack of new slow because of this issue. Um, so having our own rig gives us the ability to work continually through next year. Um, um, and the same with the geophysical equipment. So we're, we're really gearing up, as I say, to, to be able to manage our own destiny, but also to work um, more efficiently um, and more cost effectively than any other potential explorer uh, in the areas that we're operating. Um, to boot, we have such a large area to explore. Um, the only way to do it cost effectively is, is um, to own our own equipment. We're trying to think like a major whilst operating um, with a junior's budget. Um, so far, everything's come together quite well. Um, Jewelry, as I say, has been uh, refurbished. Um, all of the ancillary equipment is, is acquired, trucks, um, trailers. There's a lot that goes with this. Um, it's, it's taken us a little while to put it together, but it'll be worth uh, it'll be worth the wait for all of our investors and potential investors. So um, I'll flick through to the last slide. Yes. Yeah, so but this really is our value proper, uh, proposition. So we, we are primed to find a Tropicana, Tropicana style deposit uh, and scale deposit. Um, we own all of our tenure 100%. We're in no joint ventures with anybody else. We potentially could look to joint venture some of our projects at a later date. Uh, we do believe in adding value before we get there. Um, the exploration approach that we have adopted is, is very much what was used to discover Tropicana. Uh, we're also utilizing a lot of information that was unavailable to deeper in Newmont um, in, in the early 2000s. Um, all of the exploration done historically is um, non-sterilizing, as mentioned before. It's, it's been done very methodically and uh, systematically. Um, and there are no uh, RC holes closer than a kilometer apart, which indicates the poor density of drilling that's currently in, uh, in the large anomaly that we have. A lot of money spent by other people. Uh, we, we specifically pulled the projects together with that in mind. And uh, we've tried to add as much value um, as we've gone along and intend to add significant amount more value as we progress. Uh, we own all the historical data for all of our tenure, um, which is uh, 
is possibly unusual. Um, it's also been very helpful um, in developing and progressing our project and our understanding of the project. Um, lots of geophysics, as, as mentioned, uh, planned. Uh, we've already done a lot. Uh, the results are quite spectacular from our opinion. Um, it, it says we're on the right track um, and we, we anticipate finding uh, targets for years and years to come to drill and um, you know a lot of a lot of those are uh, correlated through geophysics through to surface anomalism and um, you know, we, we think we're going to come up with some really good results. Um, currently we have six to 12 months of uh, drill programs planned um, as I say we, we need to get in field with the initial one but we're nearly there. Um, um, big land package, we, we're not necessarily looking to increase our land package uh, as it stands. We think we have enough to deal with, uh, but we, we think we have more opportunities in that land package than many other explorers put together. Um, our long-term goal really is to try and repeat IGO's success in the Albany Fraser and uh, what they managed to achieve with uh, Tropicana. So um, that, that's obviously our, our end goal. Uh, we'd like to see this through to uh, at least a resource and potentially to a mine. Um, and as mentioned, we, we have four or five projects within the tenure as it stands and, and any one of those potentially could host a mine uh, or at least a resource. So yeah, I thank everyone for their attention and I hope that was clear. Adam, thank you. Uh, thanks very much for the update uh, on Nelson. Um, it, given that you are now taking the drilling effectively back in house and the, the, the cash of the resources that you have uh, within the company, how long do you think the uh, you have funding for, given that you've got your own equipment and you're not paying third party? Yeah, good question, Mark. So what we've what we've tried to achieve firstly is um, acquiring equipment at cost effectively. Uh, we've managed to pick up uh, really good secondhand condition equipment, and timing wise, we we possibly uh, struck gold. Excuse the pun. Um, the equipment was was idle and we, we were just leading into um, potentially the next boom in gold. So the equipment was dormant and we, we picked up it very cheaply. We've, all, almost, we've also managed to defer all of our payments. So we're actually effectively paying off all this new equipment that I've mentioned in the presentation. So that, that's brought us uh, six to 12 months of uh, operating uh, without requiring, being required to raise any more money. Um, that being said, with uh, with a bit of dual success, we, we did anticipate that we, we might look to the market or other avenues to raise some more capital. Um, we obviously don't want to be too uh, yeah, bullish about what we're doing. We, we obviously need funds to ensure longevity. Absolutely. Um, there was a question from the, uh, the from the floor is uh, around your expansions or recent additions you've made to the, the exploration team within, within Nelson. Um, what are the priorities Guess what they are, but uh, what are the priorities for the uh, for the expanded team? Um, yeah, so from a geophysics perspective, it, it, it's really been um, uh, Justin Ward is, is our uh, chief geophysicist and uh, a very well respected um, individual. Um, his priority really has been acquiring um, our IP system, um, uh, leading the mag surveys, uh, and and trying to think outside of the box in respect to the geophysics that we uh, are applying. In the area, a, a lot has changed since IGO um, and CEPA were, sorry, not IGO, uh, CEPA and Newmont were in this area, and and IGO has actually been leading the charge on geophysics and the Albany Fraser. So um, he's really trying to take as much information as we can from work that's been done by others and apply it to what we're doing. Um, so that really is his role. Um, um, our exploration manager, James Farrell, is, is really being targeted with trying to look at the bigger picture in respect to uh, the Albany Fraser and our tenure. Uh, as mentioned a number of times, we have three major fault zones confluencing here, and uh, all of those are known to, to bear gold uh, regionally. So we're, we're trying to look at this from a, uh, from a large scale as opposed to um, um, honing into smaller projects there there is there is a lot happening in our area so sure. um additional to that um we've obviously just employed uh, a, a professional driller who's uh, come on board and he's tasked with getting us into field in the, in the next two weeks um hopefully we can pull that off but we'll be out there very soon regardless so. and good luck with that and uh, adam thanks very much for the uh, the update and we all look forward to seeing nelson uh discovering the next um the next tropicana thank you mark appreciate that and thank you nwr